What makes Unicorn different from other esports betting operators? We've built a, a platform that's um, the most comprehensive platform for betting on esports and video games in the world. You can bet on your you can you can bet on um, professional esports events. You can also watch and bet on virtual esports, which you know is something that we created. You can watch your favorite streamer on Twitch or Mixer and bet on them, which no one else is doing. You can bet on your own skill on games that you love to play. Do you think that this is the you know the key to, key to the future and and you know, you as a true innovator, are there any other exciting innovation, exciting innovations in the pipeline? Hundreds of millions of people watch esports, and billions of people play video games, and um, and the world of entertainment has has been changing. Young people go to Vegas and they don't spend time betting; they go straight to the nightclub. And you know, so we started to see those trends, and then we started to see the trends in traditional sports, where the fan base is getting older. But then all of a sudden this pandemic happens, you know, everything shuts down and, uh, and things just started to happen. I mean, our business was growing, but we never felt what we're feeling now where, um, you know, people are changing the way that they entertain themselves. Obviously esports has just gone like wild because, you know, all traditional sports completely shut down. So, but, you know, let's clarify once and for all why esports are truly sports. Yeah, you're right. There are people who roll their eyes at it, but, you know, it, it's, it's almost like rolling your eyes at ping pong or darts or something. You know, there's a high level of intensity that goes into competing at the highest levels on games like Dota and League of Legends and CSGO. The, the, the more physically fit and, and mentally fit you are, the faster your Twitch response is, um, you know, you're working under pressure. Uh, you're working in teams, you're collaborating, you're leading, you're basically being a quarterback. A lot of younger people who watch esports don't give a crap about football or, or baseball or that sort of thing. They just, this is what they love to do. I don't know, man. I think esports is absolutely, not only is it a sport, but it's the future of where things are going. Is it actually true that your, your son, you know, suggested you this idea that you should actually start the esports betting company because you love playing the games? <laughs> Well, my son actually said I should get into esports. He didn't say I should do esports betting. So I started to spend time with him to learn more about it. Yeah, he got me into League of Legends. And then I realized, you know, just how big it had gotten. You know, there's a few opportunities. Like one is you start a team and then there's um, the content space like Twitch or Mixer. It takes a lot of work to get into that space. Um, <clears throat> you can be a publisher. So, you know, you can try to create a game like uh, League of Legends, which you know is hard, <laughs> or you get into the, the, the wagering space. And, uh, and the wagering space is, um, you know, one of the most promising spaces. Um, so we decided to get into wagering and it's, it's been amazing. Uh, the unicorn gold. Because yeah. it's very, very important part of the, the, the innovation you did with the unicorn. So, you know, it was, the, it was the world's first gaming utility token, right? I mean, I've been in uh, the crypto space since 2012. Not like super early, but early enough. Early been, enough. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting into Bitcoin at the time. And um, I've, I've been a, a kind of a Bitcoin maximalist for, for multiple years. I love Bitcoin. And uh, um, we created the unicorn because... We're a regulated gambling company and, and not everyone in the world could use our platform. I said, okay, let's create this coin. And we did that in 2015 and we started to create this, this coin economy. It's, it's been a great thing for us because our, our platform is built on blockchain. Our wallet is built on blockchain. It's very unique. The, um, the tough part about it is that the whole crypto market just went up like crazy and then, and then crashed. So, with that being said, we do have plans for it. Like a lot of people think that we're, you know, we, we don't care so much that we're not doing anything with it. That's just not true because the Unicoin is the center of our ecosystem. We are doing something pretty significant that's going to launch sometime um, in July. It's going to really highlight the usage of, uh, of, of UKG and give it a, a, a very big platform with, with millions of users that that are very familiar with crypto so uh, let's say how make your life easier in this this technology uh you know the the security around bitcoin is is next level and it's crazy to think that you could walk around with a piece of paper with the with a million dollars uh on it and then and then produce that million dollars within a second uh just by typing in those words in a specific order and the other thing about bitcoin that's really unique is it's unhackable like it's never been hacked as much as people like to say, oh, you know, 
cryptocurrency gets hacked. <laughs> Bitcoin does not get hacked. What gets hacked is people. Crypto exchanges, you know, they get hacked. So you have to be very careful and mindful. But I'm telling you that all of that is getting better. It's changing. People are getting smarter. The technology is getting easier. And over time, the social construct for Bitcoin will only get bigger, which means people like yourself and, you know, like younger people are all going to believe in it. Uh, they're going to support it. And therefore, you know, with only 21 million Bitcoin outstanding, I can only imagine Bitcoin is going to be an investment that everybody should at least have some of in their portfolio. Back to the, what you said before, you know, that you are the, you are the huge fan of the League of Legends, right? Yeah. So what title are you most excited about, you know, especially these days and from the kind of the betting point of view? Well, League of Legends. I mean, that's that's yeah. to, to me, that's it. Like, that's my that's my game of choice. Um, yeah. I I play it, uh, you know, all the time. I bet on myself. I also watch other people play it. What's cool about it is, you know, I'm you know I'm in my mid 40s and I play this game, and I know the people that I'm playing against are much younger than me. But um, but uh, it's it's always fun to to play a game like that. And are you having your your favorite uh, streamers on the Twitch as well? Yeah, I do. I do. I mean, I watch, I mean, it's not always Twitch. I, I watch Ninja on Mixer sometimes. I like Bunny Fufu. He's, he's awesome to watch. Um, so I watch people like that. You know, uh, the, the, your team is, is based in, uh, in Germany, right? Yes. So can you tell us about, the, about that and why in Germany and from the ge geographical point of view, like what are like a hot spots or hot, hot spot, hot, hot hubs, especially in Europe? Yeah. So One in five Germans watch esports, <laughs> and uh, and esports. That's a lot. <laughs> yeah, and esports in Germany is absolutely massive. And, um, you know, when we started Big, we uh, we we started it because the team, the people involved, uh, are just nice guys, and um, and they're great role models. But we recently divested our interest because um, because as we grow and as a gambling company, it's kind of hard to have a 30% stake in a in a uh, you know in a team that you're taking bets on talking right? about the investment you have invested in in uh, and acquired several companies in uh, in the recent years right yeah. so which has been the most most interesting for you um well there's a couple uh so so one of them is uh, zed um zed is really neat because these guys they they make digital thoroughbreds that are limited and they're sold on blockchain And, and so these are, these are actual digital thoroughbreds that have limited um, uh, attributes and, and limited and, and certain bloodlines and things like that. And, um, and they are, um, you know, they're, they're, they're essentially these, these digital okay. thoroughbreds, you kind of see it behind me, um, you know, where they look like they're from the future. Um, and they, uh, and they, they all have, they can be bred. You can, you can race them. You can trade them. Um, so and, uh, and then, and then you can win prizes so in the very near future. You'll be able to watch the races on Twitch and you'll be able to bet on them on Unicorn. And so it's very cool and it's, and it's available today. And so that's one investment that's super interesting. Um, the other one that's really interesting is main gear, the, the PC company I just showed you, they build some unbelievable PCs. Um, and, uh, we just started building ventilators for the pandemic. So yeah, it's a neat company. You go a little bit back to the rules with these pieces, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. You know, and what comes to my mind as well is that, you know, you started the, the unicorn company with Mark Cuban and you got also the, the, the investor as Ashton Kutcher on your board. Yeah. So it was it difficult to get, it, get them on the board or the idea sold itself? Um, to get them on board, no, not really. I mean, they uh, it started off with Mark essentially. Um, Mark Cuban was a mentor of mine when I had Voodoo. Um, but I I announced Unicorn on CNBC, and uh, <clears throat> and he saw the episode, and he he emailed me within um, two minutes of me finishing the show, and he said, "Congratulations for Unicorn. Sounds amazing. Esports is growing like crazy." Uh, and then he basically asked, uh, "Why didn't you tell me?" And I And I messaged him, I said, look, I would have told you, but we're way past the seed stage. It's too far along, you know, for you. Um, but, you know, I definitely would have told you. And he said, why don't you just send me the deck and I'll take a look. And I did. And he said, I'm in. So like he, <laughs> within a half hour, he decided to get in on, on board. 
And then once he got on board, you know, everybody wanted to get on board. But you know, what, what comes to my mind at the moment is that there is, you know, like this, uh, yeah, as you mentioned as well, you brought the esports even to the, to the Las Vegas, right? For the par partnership with the MGM. Yep. And as you said already, you know, these, these, these traditional gamblers and even like, you know, the sportbook factor, they are, they are getting older and older. So how do you see the esports relating to the traditional gaming space and where do you see developing? Look, uh, I, I, I've been talking to casinos for years um, about how the, the slot machine area is, is becoming less relevant to younger people. You know, if you, if you walk through the slots, you'll see wheelchairs and walkers, but you won't see a lot of young people playing slot machines because quite honestly, slot machines are boring. And people who are smart and young, they look at it as a way to flush your money down the toilet. They would much rather go to the bar and spend $20 on a drink, you know? So, um, so I, I had been pushing them to start thinking about esports and, and taking out some of these slot areas and maybe creating environments where gamers could come and hang out and play mm -hmm. games. Uh, and so that was kind of the, uh, the start. Um, and then, as you know, the, you know, MGM went off and they did this deal in the Luxor where they opened up this esports, uh, you know, lounge or whatever in the, in the, in the LA, LAX nightclub. And, um, and it's great. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful esports venue. The problem is they don't have any gambling in it um, because they didn't put all the pieces together, you know, and Unicorn Power is the gambling part of it. And so, you know, so they're just, people just aren't moving fast enough. And now the pandemic happens. Caesars furloughed 90% of their employees. MGM, same thing. You know, they're all basically wondering what to do next because they have these massive hotels that are shut down. In the meantime, DraftKings goes public. And DraftKings is a, is a sports book. They, they are now worth $15 billion. They, they went public at a $3 billion valuation. This company was, was at a point where it, had, it was running out of cash at some point in time. And, you know, they, they just struggled and they went through it. And now they're worth $15 billion. And, be, and because they have the biggest sports book in the U.S., people are investing in, their, in the future potential of the U.S. market. But Caesars and, and MGM are having a tough time competing against them because DraftKings is, it's a digital company. They're very modern and they deal with a younger audience. And now, you know, Unicorn is getting called by all of these guys, you know, to find ways to partner. And, um, you know, we will eventually. We'll, we'll be in the U.S. with our platform at some point, but it's, it's unreal how the business has changed. Like, you're absolutely correct the, that, uh, you know, people aren't interested in the slots, but now, they're, now they realize how bad it actually is. Is that... So. Uh... As we are talking about that, this all the crisis, you know, the, the boosted the esports. Mm -hmm. Are you attracting those 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 traditional sports betting? Uh, we are, we are. So um, you know, even though our site is very uh, esports focused or esports first, um, we are attracting traditional bookmakers, uh, uh, clients who bet on traditional sports to try esports. And we also launch sports. We launch sports so that those customers can come on our platform, use it for sports, and then parlay it on esports. Um, you'll see, Unicorn is going to increase the breadth of our offering over the next month or so. I mean, we're going to be like on fire, running uh, multiple uh, different products on our platform, uh, still with an esports first focus, um, but we're going to be, um, you know, a much stronger company in the next few months, especially because of the way things are happening right now with this environment. It is unfortunate that it, it took a, a, a pandemic to catch people's attention, and it's sad because we built this platform before this ever happened. Uh, uh, and, you know, I guess, I guess we're, we're, we're glad we built it before, but, you know, it, it's, it's, it's helping to entertain people who are at home now, you know, so, yeah. As you know, the, the college dropout, you know, who has gone on massive success. What yeah. do you think, what is wrong with, with the current educational system? Because there is a lot of stuff wrong with that, you know. What an interesting question. Uh, <laughs> um, look, I... I have this discussion all the time. Um, the thing is, I, I didn't go. I never went to college. I, I followed my passion of gaming, and I started building these gaming PCs, and it ended up snowballing into something great. But now, uh, COVID, with the pandemic, it's, it's breaking the education system. The education system is now yeah, it's being exposed for what it truly is which is, uh, it's mostly like a giant scam. Scam, like, you know, people are spending lots of money on, on education and they're not able to get a job. 
that sucks, right? That's a terrible situation to be in. Um, and now that, you know, people are sort of at home, um, is it worth 50,000, 100,000 a year or no, right? And it's, it's clearly not. I think getting an education is important if you aren't sure where you're going in life, if you're, um, if, if you do know where you're going and, and that, that requires you to kind of work, uh, you know, and, and, and experiment and that sort of thing, I always say it's a good idea to take a year off just to think, uh, you know, to, to, to find out what you're passionate about and then direct yourself towards that passion. So it really depends on, on you know, what you want to do with your life. But, but the bottom line is the education system is completely broken and, and COVID's exposing it just like they exposed a lot of businesses that are kind of built on, on uh, you know, a shell. So, yeah. yeah. Great response, great response. Well, Rahul, you know, thank you so much for taking the time to join me here today. And I'm very appreciated that you shared with us your, your insights into esports. And I, 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 I'm sure we're going to hear a lot about Uricom very soon. Thank you. I appreciate it. Have a nice day. You too. Bye-bye.